Hey everybody, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part two of our series on making a character controller in Unity. So in our last video, we set up this very basic character controller, and I kind of bowled through the process and didn't really get into the how or why of the coding we're doing and why we're building this the way we are. And there's a couple reasons for that. The first is that this is really not an optimal um, setup for a character controller and reasons that we'll get into in this video, actually. Um, and the second thing is that to really properly do a character controller, there's a lot of planning that needs to go into it ahead of time, and I want to at least get kind of a proof of concept onto the screen before I dove into all of that decision making that we're going to start doing now and do throughout this series. So let's jump over to Mono Develop and see why I don't really love the setup we have right now for our character controller. So looking at our basic controller script, there's a lot of things in here that leave a lot to be desired. Um, firstly, we see here that all of our uh, keystrokes or key codes, um, any of our player inputs right now, are hard-coded into our controller. And that means that our control scheme is very inflexible uh, when it comes to things like different, um, different preferences or even completely different devices for putting an input. Um, the second thing is that everything is being handled. This entire um, process of taking in inputs, processing them, moving the character, is all being handled in one single script, which is not very modular and really not optimal for our um, ultimate character controller solution. Lastly, how we have this set up, the process we're doing here, we're having our controller kind of look back at the input for every possible input that we could want, you know, up and down buttons, left and right buttons, before deciding whether or not it's going to move the character in any of these directions. And let me explain what I mean by look back in that sense of looking back at the input, which has to do with a character controller setup, a, um, actually what it's an, actually a user interface pattern that we're going to be using for our character controller. So, Back in the 1970s, a computer scientist named Trigva Rinskog introduced a new idea into a programming language that he was working on called Smalltalk. His thinking was that for graphical user interfaces, which were pretty new at the time, software architecture should be divided into three sections. The first section, the model, is responsible for actually running the computer program. The next section, the view, presents information on the screen or whatever method of display is being used. And then lastly, the controller takes in user inputs and converts those into program commands. Each of these sections was effectively self-contained, but could pass messages to the next section. There's technically a fourth section in this pattern, which is the user herself, who will receive the information from the view, process what she wants to do, and then pass this input to the controller. But basically, this pattern is commonly called Model View Controller Pattern, or MVC. For our purposes, it makes a little bit more sense though to call it actually, or view it by controller, then model, then view, because that's the order our con character controller will be working in. We're going to input into the controller, pass that to the model, and then we'll eventually see that as the view. It is also a little bit confusing that one section of our character controller is called the controller, so I'm going to refer to that as the input. And um, one last thing is that 99% of our work in this series is actually going to be in just the input and the model section of this controller. Um, because once we've given our character the you know orders to move or perform some kind of action, Unity ultimately handles the rendering to the screen for us. So the problem we have with our current character controller is that everything is happening in that one script. And also, the model, we're making the model kind of look back at the input to check is there, are any of these buttons being pressed every single frame. And that's really not ideal. What we want to be doing is kind of passing this information forward wherever we can. So what we're going to start building now is a system that will take in the input and then pass the relative data to our model, to our controller script that will then move our game object, our character, around. A lot of our character controller setup is going to center around an input manager, and this script is going to be responsible for taking in our player's inputs and passing them as Unity actions to our controller, which actually could be one of many types of controllers. It could be a walking controller, it could be a vehicle controller, a flight controller, etc. So actually the input manager is also going to be responsible for deciding where to send this input data once it receives it and processes it. 
It would also be nice if we can adapt our controller to different devices. Maybe your game can work with a gamepad or a keyboard. Or maybe you want to port a game that was originally for PC over to a mobile device with touch controls. One way that we can do this is to make sure that to keep our inputs modular so that we can kind of swap out devices much in the way that we would swap out um, our actual controllers. So in order to do this, we're going to create an abstract class called a device tracker, and then we're going to have many classes that will inherit from it, things like a keyboard tracker, or a mouse tracker, or a gamepad tracker, or a VR headset tracker, whatever we need to then actually track the very specific inputs we're getting and then pass them to the input manager so that they can be processed and sent out appropriately. So let's jump over to the Unity editor and start creating our classes and scripts. So back here in the Unity editor, we've right now just got our scripts folder with our single basic controller script. I'm actually going to create a new folder called, um, I'm just gonna call it old scripts. And we're gonna put the basic controller in there because we're not really gonna be using that anymore. Now I'm gonna create two more folders here. One is going to be called input scripts and the other I'm going to call um, model scripts. And these are for those two phases of the um, controller and then model and then view system. So in the input scripts, we're going to create C sharp script, call it input manager. We're also going to create a C sharp script called device tracker. And this is going to be our abstract class that will customize to various devices. And for now, we're just going to create one device. We're going to make a keyboard tracker. We'll start with that and then we can build out other devices later on. In our model scripts, we're going to create two classes as well. The first one is going to be a controller. And this is going to be kind of the basic, um, another abstract class that's really just the kind of the basic template for what other um, controllers will do. And then we're going to create, start off with our walking controller. So that's going to control our basic movements when we're just walking up, down, left, right, as well as any actions that we can perform while we're walking around. Now let's open up a couple of these. We'll open them all up in Mono Develop. Just gonna give them a double click here. And we'll jump over here. So walking controller. Give it a second to catch up. There we go. So walking controller is going to inherit from controller instead of mono behavior. And we're gonna get rid of the start and update functions for right now. I don't think we're gonna need those. Controller, likewise, can inherit from mono behavior, but we're going to delete both of these. Now there is gonna be, and I'm gonna add a quick to-do here, add function, actually I should say add method. And I'm gonna call this, um, something like read input. And basically what's gonna happen is once we get an input data, we're going to pass that into a read input function or method that every controller will have. <clears throat> so we're gonna to wanna to make sure to put it in the actual controller kind of template script so that the input manager knows, okay, I'm giving this to a controller, they're always gonna have a read input function that I can work with. Keyboard tracker is going to inherit from device tracker. In this one, we're going to delete the start function. We're going to keep the update function because this is where we're actually um, monitoring for what keys are pressed. So we are going to need an up update function there to see every frame is a button being pressed. Input manager, we're going to get rid of both of these don't need those. And then lastly, device tracker will inherit from, we'll keep it inheriting from mono behavior right now. I think that makes the most sense. 
Um, I'm not sure that we're going to need an update function in here because unlike unlike over here where it, the walking controller benefits from knowing that it has a read input, um, we don't really need to worry about the update function because that kind of Unity handles that on its own. Everything has an update function ultimately. Or if it doesn't, it doesn't freak out Unity about it. So we can just delete all of that in there. So these are the five core scripts that we're going to be working with to build our initial, um, you know, more fully fledged character controller. And in our next um, video, we're going to look at setting up our input manager in terms of what buttons we really need so that we're really only tracking for the buttons that are most important to our game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.